This is the label demo. And what I'd like for us to do first is go to My PVCC at the top of our PVCC homepage. And once we enter our My PVCC, go to Canvas, open Canvas up. And we are going to go to Typography. And we're going to scroll down to week six and we are going to grab our label project demo and we are going to right click and open label demo dash one zip and i'm going to save link as to the desktop and i will save and i will minimize my window and once it's completely downloaded you might have to wait a moment we can double click and open the demo and let's look at what's in the folder. If we look at what's in the folder here, you'll see that we have our InDesign document, and that's where we'll be placing and laying out all of our visuals. This is an illustration that I developed for the wine label, and I have a blank bottle that we're gonna place our label on. I also have an example of the label, and I have some additional examples of labels designs for labels in a PDF over here. All right, so what we're gonna do first um, before we go any further is kind of look at what we're gonna be making. Let's go to InDesign and let's hit Command Option Control Shift and let's open it up. Now, if you're on a PC, you can hit Control Alt Shift. We're gonna say yes, delete to all design preferences. Once it's open, I'd like for us to open the document that we have on our desktop. Let's go to File, Open, or Command or Control O, and we'll go to Label Example, and I'm going to open it up. This is the example of what we'll be working on today. We're going to be developing an illustration in Photoshop, and we'll be placing text on a document. We'll also be looking at uh, layer formats, etc. So let's get going on this. So let's minimize this window while we're not using it. Next, we're gonna to go to Photoshop and I'd like for us to hit Command Option, Control Shift if you're on a Mac and if you're on a PC, I'd like for you to hit Control Alt Shift and we're gonna open that up. And yes, we're gonna delete our settings file. And once we're here, I'd like for us to open a file. Now you can drag and drop an image and maybe that's what we'll do here. I'll go to my label demo off to the side and let's just drag and drop our red grapes in there. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna try to make this look like a separated image. And I'm gonna open my example in my label demo here just so you guys can see what we'll be making next. So if I zoom in, you can see that I have a solid a color here and underneath, I have an image of just a color underneath the solid image. And it's kind of creating a posterized effect. All right, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. Let's go to our image mode first, and we're gonna to go to grayscale. And we're gonna discard all of the color information. And the next thing I'd like for us to do is I'd like for us to duplicate this layer. So we can drag it down into our plus key right here at the bottom, and this will make a new layer, and we'll have a background copy. Next thing I'd like for us to do is to go to Image Adjustments, and we're going to go to Levels. Now, now you can use your levels down at the bottom right here on a separate layer, but I, I actually want to affect this layer for this particular demonstration. So you can also hit Command L to get your levels. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna grab this black dropper tool and we're gonna try to make all this information here darker. And we're gonna try to make it pretty dark. And you can drag in some of your slider bars here on your levels to get this darker. All right, and we're gonna hit okay. Now I'm noticing there's some gray tone in that background. Now that would show up if we were to add this to our wine label. So what I'd like for us to do here, we're gonna go to our levels again and we're gonna grab the white dropper tool and we are going to zoom in and make all those gray areas as white as possible in the background. So it should look something like this. All right, 
Once we're done with that, what we can do is go to image and we're going to change the color on this and we're going to go to mode and we're going to go to duotone. Once it's grayscale, you can turn it into a duotone. I'm going to change the color here and I'm going to click on this and I'm going to choose a greenish color and I want it to be a darker green color. Not as much black in there, maybe a little bit more blue tone in it. Something like that. And I hit OK. I'm going to title this green. Once I'm done with that, what I'd like for us to do is to unlock our background layer. We can go in and title these layers. So I'm going to make this my color layer. Let's double click on that, hit color. And for my background layer, I'm going to double click it to unlock it. Now I'm going to title this layer grapes. And I want everything to be normal mode and I want opacity to be at 100%. Okay, next thing I'd like for us to do is go to mode and we're going to change it to CMYK because I'd like to work back in full color after this. And we're not going to merge these layers. We're going to say don't merge. I'm going to hit OK. And what we're going to do next is we're going to change the color of the second layer. Um, so the main color layer is going to be a purple color. You can go to Image, Adjustments, and go to Hue and Saturation, or you can hit Command U or Control U on your keyboard. And let's change that hue. I want to change it to a more purple color. And I want it to be a kind of a brighter color purple. I'm going to desaturate it just a little bit. And that's looking like the color I want it to be. Preview. Okay. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to put this behind my grapes. And the next step we're going to do is just so we can see what we're working on is we're going to go to our top layer of the grapes and we're going to go to a different layer format. We're going to go to multiply so that we can see what we're working on. It looks kind of like a gray image because it's a green over top of a purple layer. So I'd like for us to select our bottom color layer and I'd like for us to grab our eraser tool off to the side and you can make it bigger or smaller by using your bracket tool. I'm using my right bracket tool to make it a little bigger and I'm going to come and just knock off some of that color there as best as I can. Now I'm going to come in back with a smaller eraser to kind of clean it up. So I can hit my left bracket tool and I can come in here and clean it up as best as I can. And we want to be as precise as possible. So I can zoom in and clean it up. Now you can hit your bracket tool to make it smaller, just to get in some of these little details here. And we want to make this again as clean as possible. And I'm going to move over and kind of continue down the line here. So the bottom is now an issue for us. We have to clean up the bottom. It's kind of this purple reflection. I don't want to have any reflection. I want it to be kind of an isolated image. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to erase that purple. It's going to leave that green kind of back there. So we're going to do the best we can to kind of clean it up. Instead of using the eraser tool, I'm going to grab my brush tool up here and I'm going to make sure that I'm selected on my white and I'm going to make it a little bigger and I'm going to come in here and make sure you have a hard edge. Mine's showing a soft edge. Make my hardness, you know, 
and it looks like it's not white. It's still uh, selected on my gray color. And now it's white. So we are cleaning this up a little bit. I'm noticing I'm missing a couple spots on my purple there. And you can always go back and clean things up. Now I am destroying the layers, so if you've worked in Photoshop with uh, Aaron or Ashley Gill, I'm doing a destructive illustration. That means that the only way to go back is to hit Command Z. But the cool thing about Photoshop is that you have an infinite Command Z, which means we can go back or we can go to our history bar. You guys can really see we have you know, all the way back to the beginning. So, uh, also you can take snapshots throughout the way. Uh, but right now, I just want to kind of show you guys a process of making an illustration. And that's looking okay to me. All right, so that's our illustration at the moment. Um, on the original, you can see that the grapes are kind of a more bluish tone. And what I did was I went to this layer and I made it this uh, pin light. Um, and you can see that it's not quite right. And we can adjust the hue and saturation of this. So I can, you know, go to my command U or control U and kind of continue messing with the hue and saturation. You know, I can desaturate. There we go. And getting it closer. Also, um, on the last time, I took my levels, so I hit Command L or Control L. Again, make this a little darker so that we get it a little closer. All right, so this should be a little closer to our original. And I'm going to X out of the original. I'm not going to save it. And I am going to save this bunch of grapes to the desktop, except I'm going to retitle it. I'm going to save as. And I'm going to save it to my computer. We can save it to our label demo because all of our files are in there and that's okay. But this time we're going to title it Grapes Final. And save it to our label demo. And it's okay that it's a Photoshop file. And save. And hit OK. So once we have our illustration, we can go on and we can work on it, our InDesign document. So I'm going to minimize this. And I'm going to go to InDesign, and we're going to recreate this document right here. So what I'd like for us to do first is go to File, New, or Command N, and we are going to go to Inches. After we've changed to Inches, what I'd like for us to do is enter 3 as our width, and 4.25 as our height, and that is the specifications of this project. I'm going to make a few pages. I'm going to make uh, maybe a couple. And I'm not going to make them facing pages like a spread. I'm going to make them separate individual pages, so I'm not going to make them facing pages. I'm going to start on page one. I'm going to have two columns. Um, you can get rid of the gutter or you can keep the gutter. I'm going to keep it just for the purposes of this demo. And we want to set our margins at 0.125. And we are going to set our bleed at 0.25, like we have in the past. And I'm going to hit Create. So this is our document here. And before we move any further, I'd like for us to add some grids or guides to this project. And instead of Essentials up at the top, I'd like for us to go to Typography. And once we're here, we can go to our Master A. Let's add some guides to this. Let's go to Layout, Create Guides, and we are going to hit three rows, and let's preview it. And I'd like for us to have no gutter on those rows. So this is what it should look like. And it says that it's hit to the page. Make sure that it's hit to the margins. So that should look better. All right, so once we're there, what I'd like for us to do is go to our page one 
and we're gonna start laying it out. I'm gonna lay a kind of paper texture on the background just for the purposes of this demo. Now, this is something that you would choose if you were working with a printer, you would choose a particular paper style, but let's say we are you know, trying to show a demonstration or show something in a digital realm, then you would wanna choose a background color or background paper. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command D, or we can go to File Place, and I'd like for us to grab this ivory off-white paper texture from our labeled demo. Let's hit Open. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click it from the exterior of that bleed, and I'm gonna drag it out. You can see I'm trying to make it widthways, and I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to place it into that document. And I'm gonna make it a little bigger by hitting my Control and Shift, or my Command and Shift. And we are going to fit it to that bleed. So the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna start building this much like we built the original. And we're gonna start placing our text and images. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna place our document from our desktop and we're gonna to go to Command D or Place. And let me go to my desktop and grab my label demo. And I'm gonna grab my grapes final here. I'm gonna go open. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click within my margin and then I'm gonna click and drag out so that the image fits that area. Now, the image kind of doesn't fit that area quite perfectly. Make sure that image kind of fits to that edge. So I want this image to kind of go to that edge of the margin. And I'm gonna click my command and my shift key. And if you're on a PC, just hit your control and your shift. And we're gonna drag out. And I'm gonna move my box in a little bit so that it fits within that margin. Now once it's there, I know it looks kind of awkward because it still has that white box. What I'd like for us to do next on this uh, is I'd like for us to go to Effects, go to Transparency, and then I'd like for us to select Multiply. And we can preview it down here in the corner. And you can see how it's going to look. So that's looking pretty good to me. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start building our text. Now, um, I'm going to reference this one. We're gonna make it in Bedoni and Gil Sands at the bottom. And we're just gonna add a fake title, Given Heart. We're gonna make a Merlot and a vintage 2010, and we're gonna just put our alcohol by volume. We're gonna use our image as the central focus of the hierarchy. Then it's gonna be Given Heart, then 2010, and then the small information. All right, so let's go in here and let's start building. So we're gonna drag out a text box at the top. We're going to type in 2010 and we're going to select it and we're going to go to Bedoni. And you should have something on your computer called Bedoni URW Bold. If not, you can activate it. I'm going to go ahead and select this one and I'm going to make it bigger. About 24 points seems pretty good and I'm gonna drag it in, the text box in. You can also hit your command option C. Now, notice that we still have our uh, smart guides so you can see exactly where to place it. I'm gonna drag it in from the margin a little bit because I have that awkward space between the image and this 2010. Now I'm noticing some optical gaps here in the middle between the 20 and the 10. So you can grab your type tool, you can click it in there, and we're gonna take our kerning and we're gonna make it you know, less than maybe 50. That looks pretty good to me. All right, and again, make sure that it's centered. So use your smart guides. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Let's add our given heart, and we're gonna grab our type tool again. We're gonna drag a text box out, and we're gonna type with a capital G, I, Uh, before we move any further, let's go ahead and change it to our Bodoni. And I want to choose the Bodoni URW. 
and we are going to choose this medium right here. And I'm going to make it a little bigger, make it about 18 points. And let's bump it up to about 20. And then let's go ahead and make that G a little bigger. Make it four points bigger. And that looks close to our original design. Let's go and check it out. And we can hit our command option C or control alt C if you're on a PC and we can start continuing to develop. Now I'm noticing a couple things with my guides here. I'm noticing my uh, grapes are a little low on the page. I'm going to kind of shift these up a little bit and I, I think 2010 is okay but I wanted to give our Gibbon heart and our Merlot a little bit more room and just make sure that it's centered. And the next step is to make our Merlot. So we're going to make a new text box. We're going to hit enter, insert a special character. We're going to add a hyphen or dash. We're going to add an M dash. And we're going to say Merlot. And I'm going to space again, and I'm going to add another insert a special character and hyphens and dashes, and I'm going to add an M dash. So that should look pretty good. And we're going to highlight our text. And I'm going to go up to the top here and change it to Bodoni. And we're going to choose the URW because that's in our cloud. And I'm going to choose the bold oblique. Except this time I'm going to track it out a little bit. So let's you know, give it a little bit more breathing. And there we go. And I can hit my command option C to fit it to the text frame or control alt C. And let's kind of center this. Now, if you're concerned about these things being perfectly centered, we can always hit our shift key and grab each of these and use our um, center right there. Um, and that will help us align it. The next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna add our gill sands at the bottom. We're gonna add the alcohol by volume. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna grab a text box from my type tool. I'm gonna drag it out at the bottom here and I'm going to type out ALC 12% by volume. And 750 milliliters. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this gill sands before I move any further. And we're going to use our Nova. I'd like to use our light or our book. And I'm going to make it much smaller. I'm going to make it like eight points. And I'm going to my 750 milliliters to the edge. You know, obviously this isn't very accurate. I'm not using a precise grid here, but I'm trying to align it to the edge of my text box or my text frame. And we can center that right here. And that should give us a good idea of our hierarchy. And if I hit my Shift W, this is what our design is looking like. Now, I want the, the ink to look like it's on the paper. So I'm gonna do one more step here. I'm gonna adjust all of this, and we are gonna make it about, I would say about 95% or 95% to 92% opacity. And that way, when we look at the text, we can see that it's kind of blending into the background. Um, again, you can, you know, choose it and make it even more transparent if you'd like. Um, it's up to you. It will change the color of the text. So if you're at 85 right there, I'd recommend keeping all of it at 85. So I would make that at 85. And there we go. So this is my final wine label here. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to go to our file export. And we're going to make a JPEG so that we can add it to our wine bottle. So I'm going to call it 
wine label final. And I am going to add it to my label demo here. And I'm going to hit save. I'm not going to make it 72 PPI. I'm going to make it 300 PPI because that's what we would use in print. I'm going to make our color space CMYK. And all pages, I'm going to choose a range and I'm going to only choose the one that I want to use for my final. So I'm going to choose one to one. I'm going to hit export. So now uh, that we're done with this label, I'm going to minimize my InDesign. I'm going to go back to Photoshop. I'm going to X out of my final PSD. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to this label demo folder again. And we're going to try to recreate this right here. And we're going to open this wine bottle uh, mock-up PSD. I'm going to throw it in there. You'll see that we're going to throw our label onto our bottle. And we're going to try to arc it and make some layers on it to give it some shadows and to put that label on this bottle. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to go back to that label demo. We're going to grab our blank bottle. We're going to throw it down into Photoshop. And if that is too difficult for you, you can always go to right here and go file open. And we can go to label demo and we can open our bottle there. Um, but since we have it open here, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to file place an embedded file, which means that it will be in the file. And we're going to go to our label demo and we are going to grab our final label. I'm going to hit place. And I notice it's a little small. And I'd like for us to use our guides. So I'm going to hit my command R or control R to grab our rulers. And I'm going to make kind of a small guide here. Now you can change this to inches if you want to, but uh, I'm going to make it, let's say, that big. And I'm not going to want it to snap, so, so I'm going to go to my view and I'm going to turn off my snap. And I'm going to drag out that corner. And I'm going to make it as far to the edge as I possibly can. Now I'm noticing that the guides aren't as big as I want them to be. So I might move my guides down a little bit. Um, and I'm thinking that this should be a little higher up on the bottle. But there is a reason why we are using these ruler guides. And that looks great. That looks great. Once we're here, we can zoom in. And what I'd like for us to do uh, before we move any further uh, is I'd like for us to hit our return key just so that we can see that the image is a little clearer. Um, and the next thing I'd like for us to do is to select that image and we are going to hit Command T or Control T or you can go to Edit Transform and we are going to distort. And what we can do once we go to distort is we can go to this little grid tool up at the top and we can start making a little arc on the top to make it look a little more like the bottle shape. Is everybody kind of seeing that? Now we want to make it subtle. We don't want it to look like it was accidentally done. And we're going to do it on the bottom. And the reason I put those guides there is so we can see how much of an arc we're making. Because Sometimes we don't know. That looks pretty good to me. Might even take that in a little bit. That looks good. And I hit return or enter. And once it's done, uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to start building our shadows on top. Now we can turn our guides off by hitting command or control semicolon. I'm going to just turn them off so we can see what we're working on. And what we're going to do next is we're going to add a new layer down here on the right side. And we're going to grab our paintbrush tool and we're going to choose our default here, which is our black. And before I start adding any marks, I'd like for it to be a soft edge brush. So we'll just be a soft edge brush. We can make it a little bigger, but I think this is the right size. And I'm just going to kind of make and you can hold your shift key to make straight lines. 
and I'm going to click in a new space. And once we're here, uh, what I'd like for us to do, because we're kind of seeing the marks we're making, we're going to go to filter up at the top and we're going to go to blur and we're going to go to gouache and blur. And this will give us a good amount of control of the radius of the blur. And I want it to kind of spread out a bunch. I'm going to get it to be almost as wide as that. And we go, okay. So once we're there, we're going to want to clean up the bottle, the edge of the bottle. And we are going to want to um, potentially clean up things that we see in this layer. So we can go to opacity and we can control kind of the darkness of that shadow that we put on. And I'm going to make it much lighter so it doesn't look quite as harsh. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to erase some of that fuzz off of the side. And what you can do here is you can take your marquee tool or your rectangular marquee tool and grab out a rectangle here. And I'm going to grab one that goes out pretty far. And I'm just going to hit delete. And then I'm going to do it to the other side. I'm going to hit delete. And this should be what our shadow looks like. All right, and that is our demo. Uh, we're going to save this to our computer, and I'm going to save it as a JPEG for the final. I'm going to call it Wine Bottle Mock, mock Up Final. And we'll go to my label demo, and I go OK. And I don't need to save this. And I can X out of that. Don't save that one. And we can go to our folder now and preview our final work. So we can look at our JPEG here. Uh, we can look at our wine bottle here. And this is our final work. For the final, I'm going to have you guys turning in your PDF, not a JPEG, of the label but I am going to have you submit a JPEG of your label put onto a wine bottle. All right. Good luck, everybody.